Hi, I'm Alicia Duque, and welcome to The Progressive Voice. Infrastructure, a word we keep hearing on social feeds and conversations from elected officials in our new administration. But what does infrastructure mean? More specifically, what does it mean for us in our greater NEPA community? By definition, infrastructure refers to the basic systems and services that countries or organizations need in order to function properly. They are essential to support our lives and economy. Currently, there is much debate on what qualifies. On today's episode, we are going to dive in into what infrastructure is and what it means to us here in Northeastern Pennsylvania. I recently took some time to sit down and chat with Congressman Matt Cartwright to help us better understand infrastructure and what it will take to build back better in Greater NEPA. So there's been a lot of talk about what infrastructure is and what it isn't. Can you simply tell us what is infrastructure? What is infrastructure is a, a question that people have been uh, asking for a little while now because the uh, definition has been expanding. I think you start with the ba basics, you know, the bricks and mortar kind of infrastructure, roads and bridges and water systems and sewer systems and rail systems, uh, you know, infrastructure of the, of the, of the uh, you know, the last millennium uh, kind of infrastructure, uh, the things that helped businesses uh, uh, and, and companies get their products to market. You know, when we built the, um, the interstate highway system back in the 50s, classic government doing infrastructure because government does that stuff best. Um, and it made our, our country competitive uh, and it, uh, uh, you know, it made us more efficient in the way we moved around. Uh, infrastructure, I think, included uh, airports, uh, and air and uh, uh, you know airstrips and and all of the things that facilitate air travel uh, because that became more and more important in the last uh, last century. Water systems and sewer systems you can't forget because th these things are still there. We still rely on these things. These things were built a hundred years ago and more. And and it's so important to talk about them because if you don't keep them up. If you don't modernize them, if, if you don't renew them from time to time, if you don't maintain them, you know what happens? Flint, Michigan happens and little kids get poisoned and brain damaged if we don't do a proper job of keeping up our water systems. And of course, the same thing is true of, of sewer systems um, and, you know, uh, 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 communities at risk you know, uh, underprivileged communities are most likely to be affected by, by water system and sewer system problems. Um, all, all these things are, are infrastructure and those are the traditional parts of the definition of infrastructure. But as I say, it has been expanding lately because we, we like to include things like broadband internet as infrastructure. What do you see as the infrastructure needs of NEPA? Uh, Northeastern Pennsylvania also needs better transportation options. Uh, we need uh, better roads and bridges. Um, it's something that I've been personally working on at the top of the House Appropriations Committee to bring home more and more money to fix our roads and bridges because, you know, driving over potholes and driving on crummy roads, uh, it takes a toll on your car. Um, and, and your tires and everything. And, and it's, it's, it's a drag and, and it makes you not want to go places. Um, and, uh, you know, all of these structurally deficient bridges in Pennsylvania that we have to worry about. The way I see it is this, Alicia, if, uh, if you think about the greatest generation. I, t I talked about the interstate highway system. That was something they came back from World War II. You know, and the people living in this country going through World War II and the rationing that they, the privations that they had to suffer. And what do they do? They continued sacrificing and they made the interstate highway system and they paid for it. Uh, and it, you know, it's something that they handed down. So if you think about infrastructure as kind of a portfolio of assets, those were assets that were, that were willed to us by the previous generations. And who are we to disinvest in them, to not keep them up, to not maintain them, not to not make them better and expand them? Um, 
shame on us if, if we do that. So Northeastern, I think that the two biggest areas are transportation uh, and broadband internet for infrastructure in Northeastern Pennsylvania. How will the infrastructure plan create more jobs? The main definition of infrastructure, roads and bridges and water systems and sewer systems, you're talking about bricks and mortar things. You're talking about jobs for people who work with their hands building things. The building trades will benefit enormously. And in fact, union jobs will prosper under the Joe Biden infrastructure plan, the Build Back Better plan, because uh, he understands the importance of including Davis-Bacon protections uh, in these, these contracts to do the roads and bridges and water systems and sewer systems. And, and, and so, uh, you know, a, a lot of the people who, who have chosen to, to you know, uh, make their living with their hands and, and their ability to, you know, it, it takes a certain uh, mindset to, to wrap your head around the spatial relations involved in so many of these building things. So these are very talented people we have in Northeastern Pennsylvania, and they are part of the building trades. Most of them are unionized, but many are not. The point is everybody benefits uh, because we're, we have so much building and rebuilding and expanding to do. Uh, and it doesn't, you know, it doesn't stop with old technology, Alicia. Uh, we also have a lot, of, uh, a lot of expanding to do that has to do with renewable energy in ways you don't think. Certainly the uh, wind generators uh, and solar panels, they need experienced hands and carpenters and electricians to put these things together and make sure they run right. Um, but in addition to that, in Northeastern Pennsylvania in particular, um, hydrogen generating plants are going to be, remember, one of the biggest problems is storage of electricity, you know, because it doesn't, the wind doesn't always blow and the sun doesn't always shine. So you have to store the electricity. Well, uh, they're looking at uh, constructing hydrogen generation, generating plants. It's uh, basically you, you electrify the, the, the water, uh, uh, the oxygen escapes and you're left with hydrogen, which then you can burn. And when you burn hydrogen, the byproduct is just water. It's not pollution. And so it's a wonderful way to store electricity for when you need it. Uh, we're going to need a lot of experienced uh, hands uh, to, to build those things and, and a lot of other uh, infrastructure items. Uh, that's, that's the greatest way uh, uh, people will, will get jobs during the building phase. But in addition to that, once we've done it, okay, once we have better roads, better bridges, better con uh, communications like uh, broadband internet, better rail, uh, uh, all of that, that advantages our businesses. You know, we're all in this together. The people who work for the businesses and the business owners, it, it, it's in our interest, all of us together to make those businesses go to make them competitive, to make them able to get their products to market uh, quickly and cheaply so that they compete, they can compete on the world stage. Uh, having a better infrastructure does that. And in so doing, that creates jobs in Northeastern Pennsylvania as well. How will the proposed Amtrak expansion benefit NEPA? Well, what we're looking at is connecting Northeastern Pennsylvania to the centers of commerce and principally greater metropolitan New York City. The early 80s, we used to have Conrail uh, and Conrail went out of business. And the problem was Conrail didn't die suddenly. It, it circled the drain uh, for quite a while. Uh, it, it went through uh, death throes. And while it did, they made a lot of dumb decisions. One day I'll find out who the people were who made those decisions. But one of them was to tear up railroad tracks in the right of way between the Delaware Water Gap and central New Jersey. The, I guess their thinking was that it was going to prevent competitors from coming in. Uh, I don't understand that one little bit. Um, but what we're left with is a big expense of rebuilding all of that track. We rebuild the track. Here's the goal. Here's the vision. Why does it make sense? Because once you connect uh, a, a, a great center of commerce like greater New York City with 
a smaller place like Scranton or Stroudsburg or Mount Pocono uh, or Wilkesbury or Hazleton, you, 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 the smaller places benefit greatly. It's just automatic. It happens every time. It's part of American economic history. Uh, they did uh, they did a rail line between Boston and I want to say Bangor, Maine, and all of a sudden Bangor started booming because people people could get there easily. And if you think about it, you know uh, the decision makers, the the corporate movers and shakers, they they sit down at boardrooms board tables in big cities. And they make decisions about where they're going to place their factories. And once they do, uh, they want to send their middle managers to the factories to oversee that, you know, production is going according to plan and all of that. And they want to know that their managers can get there quickly and efficiently uh, and, uh, and uh, uh, painlessly. Um, and they love rail travel. Uh, and so they can put a factory anywhere they want. Are, are they much more likely to put a factory in a place where you can get to by rail? You bet they are. Scranton and Stroudsburg and those cities I just mentioned, they have to compete with every other city for new manufacturing jobs. Uh, and we need every advantage we can get. So that's what I'm after. I'm not just after you know a pleasant ride to New York. I mean, certainly that's nice. I'm after more and more better paying jobs in Northeastern Pennsylvania. And when we have more and better ways of connecting to our metropolitan New York City, that's what's gonna follow. Now you said Amtrak, it, it could be Amtrak, uh, but more likely it's gonna be uh, New Jersey Transit uh, because they run New Jersey Transit trains over the top of New Jersey and the New, New Jersey, uh, you know, the freeholders, uh, uh, the, the local officials there, municipal officials, they're dying to get passenger rail back because they're dealing with all of these Pennsylvania cars on their highways every day. Um, and if you think about it, every one of those cars that isn't uh, electric is spewing carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. Um, so that's another benefit of train travel is you, you cut down on pollution and, and um, and carbon going into the atmosphere. So uh, <clears throat> we have an awful a lot, awful lot of ways we can benefit from, from passenger rail travel coming back to uh, Northeastern Pennsylvania, but principally it's jobs uh, and, uh, and easing congestion uh, throughout our area and particularly in Northern New Jersey. Thank you so much for joining us today and uh, providing all this wonderful information on infrastructure. I know as a working mom of NEPA, I look forward to seeing these changes made. Um, and thank you so much for, for fighting for us. Well, Alicia, thank you. And thanks to everybody at Action Together NEPA. Uh, if you guys didn't raise your voices constantly and consistently, uh, folks like me, uh, we wouldn't even get in government. Uh, so let's let's continue to uh, to work together and create action together. We are going to wrap up this episode with a yellow flag segment. At the Progressive Voice, our yellow flag segments are dedicated to help sort out any misinformation or false choices. I'm sure you heard that infrastructure is fixing roads and bridges. But as we just learned, infrastructure is a lot more than just fixing potholes. Whether we build new bridges, care for kids and seniors, or install broadband internet, our country can't function without you. The fact of the matter is, different roads sometimes lead you to the same location. We can't build back better unless we have a recovery for all. Help us here because the American Rescue Plan and jobs are already being created. With this help, there's still a lot of work to do. The American Rescue Plan will create 19 million new jobs, and we know how important new employment is here in the greater NEPA area. With all this debate on what infrastructure is, the question is multiple choice. The answer is all of the above. Essentially, infrastructure is anything that is vital to our country's economic development and prosperity. We plan to continue this conversation by covering the many elements of what infrastructure is. Join us on our next episode as we talk about building a better infrastructure that works for everyone. 
If you enjoyed this episode, please like and share with your friends. We have so much more information on our website and we'll love for you to join us as a member. Please visit us at actiontogethernepa.org to become a part of the progressive voice in NEPA.